Welcome to Lecture Online. In this example, we're going to solve a differential equation involving Torricelli's principle. What that means is we have a big barrel right here. It's full with water, filled to a height, h, and there's a small opening at the very bottom, so water rushes through the small opening right there. And we know that the velocity of the water coming through the opening is equal to the square root of 2gh, that would be purely if there was no viscosity right here in the hole, but because if there's a small uh, there, there's a small hole there and there's a lot of pressure and viscosity in the water trying to make it through we have to have a constant factor in there that reduces the velocity by some extent also we know that the amount of volume of water coming through the pipe the delta v delta t is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe times the velocity of the water which is of course defined by this equation right there there's an initial condition where the height at time equals zero remember height is a function of time so when time is equal to zero, the height is equal to one meter. The cross-sectional area of the barrel is two meters and it's constant. And then finally, we're supposed to find how long it will take for the height, the final height of the water in the barrel, to go down to half the original height that we have. So how long will it take for half the, the water, for half the water in the barrel to leave the barrel through that little hole? All right, so we need to come up with some sort of equation to define um, the relationship between height and time. Well, one other thing we can write is that the change in the volume of the water in the barrel is going to be equal to, let's see here, the cross-sectional area times the change in the height. Now notice, as the height goes down, the volume decreases, so you need to have a negative sign right there. So there's another relationship that the change in the volume can be related to the cross-sectional area of the barrel and the change in the height of the water level. All right, now let's take this equation right here, take the delta t and put it over there, and we can say that the change in the volume can also be written as the cross-sectional area of the pipe down here times the vo velocity of the water coming through the pipe, defined by that right there, times delta t, that's by taking delta t and putting over to the right side, and then we're going to replace v by that quantity right there, so this is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe, times v, which is 0 0.6 times the square root of 2g times h, which is a function of time, times, where are we here, times the delta t, can't forget the delta t, and that we can set equal to what we have over there, because delta v can also be written as this, You'll see in just a moment why we're doing this. So that's minus the cross-sectional area of the barrel times delta H. Now remember, we were looking for a differential equation that related height and time. And if you look at this equation alone, or this portion of the equation alone, you can see that the only two variables in this portion of the equation is indeed height and time. And that we can write as a differential equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the delta T, bring it down here, the minus A, bring it down here, turn the equation around, instead of writing delta H delta T, we'll write dH dt, we'll let delta T go to zero, the limit as delta T goes to zero. So this equation now can be written as dH dt is equal to, now the left side equation becomes the right side equation, so that would be A sub P times, and maybe I want to write the 0 0.6 first, let's go ahead and do that. So we have, and I'll bring the minus across as well, so minus 0 0.6, times a sub p times the square root of 2g times h. We divide the whole thing by the cross-section area of the barrel, and now we have a differential equation, only with the variables h and t that I can solve using the separation of variable technique. Now what I'm going to do to simplify it, since both this and this are constants, they don't change, now we could have a situation where we have like a funnel here where the cross-section area changes a function of h and of course this then would become a function of h as well. But in this example, a is a constant. So I can take this whole thing right here, call it a constant, and have this as the variable. So I can write dh dt is equal to uh, minus k times h to the one-half power, because that's the square root of h, is h to the one-half power, where k is equal to this quantity right here. So let's write that on the side. So I said k is equal to 0 0.6 times a sub p times the square root of 2g divided by a. So just to simplify it, we just replace that by a single letter to make it easier to work with it. 
Now I need to use the separation of variables. I'll move the dt over here and the h down here. So I have dh divided by h to the one-half power is equal to minus k times dt. And then moving over here to continue, I'll bring the h over to the numerator. So we have h to the mi minus one-half power dh is equal to minus k times dt. And now I'm ready to integrate both sides of the equation. I can integrate the left side. I can integrate the right side. So this becomes h to the add 1 to the exponent, which is 1 half, divided by the new exponent, plus the constant of integration, equals minus k times t, plus the constant of integration right there. All right, now simplifying this just a little bit, divide by 1 half is the same as multiply times 2. So actually, what I could do, yeah, I'll write it like this. So 2h to the 1 half is equal to minus kt plus c, and I'll write this as plus c sub 1 because I think I'm going to change that constant. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so that means that h to the 1 half is equal to minus k over 2 times t plus c1 over 2, and of course c1 over 2 is just simply another constant, and then I'm going to head, go ahead and square both sides. So I'll write h is equal to the quantity minus k over 2 times t plus c quantity squared. So notice c1 divided by 2 is just another constant. And then what I want to do is I want to use the initial condition to solve for the constant c right here. So I know that when t is equal to 0, h is equal to 1. So let me plug that in here. So 1 is equal to the quantity minus k over 2 times 0 plus c quantity squared. Notice that this becomes 0, which means that 1 equals c squared, or c is equal to 1. And then if I plug that back into my equation here, I can say that h is equal to the quantity minus k over 2 times t plus 1 quantity squared. And of course, remembering what k is equal to, k is equal to that, I can then write that h, the height as a function of time, is equal to Mm, let's see here, minus 0.6 a sub p times the square root of 2g divided by 2 times a, and that would be plus 1 quantity squared. And that is the final solution that tells us the height as a function of time in this particular situation. Now, we wanted to know what the, um, how long it will take for the height to reach 1 half its initial height. And so the initial height was equal to 1, and so 1 half the initial height would be 1 half. So solving for time, oh, I'm missing my time here. I forgot to put t in there. All right, so t plus 1. Can't forget my t, otherwise I can't solve the problem. All right, so now go ahead, and I, I solve for t when I plug in 1 half here. So 1 half is equal to the quantity minus 0 0.6 a sub p times the square root of 2g divided by 2a times t plus 1 quantity squared. So we need to find out what the time is. And of course, what I need to do there is take the square root, separate the variables, solve for time. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So that means the square root of 1 half is equal to the quantity 0 0.6. There's a negative there a sub p times the square root of 2g divided by 2a times t plus 1. So I took the square root of both sides. I moved the 1 across the other side. And then I multiply by 2a divided by this quantity. So I end up with the square root of 1 half minus 1. That times 2a and divide this by the negative of 0 0.6 times a sub p times the square root of 2g and that would be equal to the time. So that would be the time that it would take for half the water to be left, uh, to be gone out of the barrel. And so I probably want to put some numbers in there, even though I'm running out of board space, but let me try. So I end up with the square root of 1 half minus 1 multiplied times 2 times a. Now the cross section area was 2 meters. So we multiply that 2 times 2 divided by minus 0.6 times a sub p, that's one square centimeter, which is 0 0.0001 square meter, and times the square root of 2 times g, and g is 9.8. That's the acceleration due to gravity. 
and that equals time. All right, now with a calculator, I can solve for that answer. Okay, so we have one, the minus 0.5, take the square root, equals times four, equals, divide by 0.6, divide by 0 0.0001, and divide by 19.6, take the square root of that, equals, equals, and it takes 4,410 seconds. So time is equal to 4,410 seconds. And of course, since there's 60 seconds in a minute, so divide by 60 seconds, that gives us 73.5 minutes. So the time is equal to 73.5 minutes. And that's how long it would take for the water, have the water to flow out of that barrel. That's how we do that. Now, quick review. So we had some relationships between the velocity and the height of the water, the amount of volume of water per unit of time that flows through an opening of cross-sectional area A sub P and the velocity, also the relationship between the height and the change in the volume, or the change in the height and the change in the volume using the cross-sectional area. We need to come up with an equation that relates H and T in the same equation, which is this part of that relationship. Then we use the separation of variables to separate H from T. We do it like right here. Then we can integrate both sides. Then we can up, come up with an equation that has a constant in it. Using the initial conditions, we then solve for that constant and we get an equation for height with respect to time. And then of course, when we plug in the, what K stands for, we have the full equation right here. And then finally, we want to find it, how long it will take for half the water to flow out of the barrel. And of course, then we have to plug in the values and solve for T. And that's how it's done.